Lakeside Dental Clinic, Go Island, is brought to you by Lakeside Dental Clinic. A ring of fire Canadians in the Pacific in World War II. We're looking at that exhibit today at the Nanaimo Museum. The past dictates our future, a snapshot of Nanaimo leading up to the municipal election, inside BC's wine industry and thriving locally. Sometimes when you're looking at historical artifacts, there's an overwhelming feeling of the stories and the reality of the stories that that artifact holds. This is one such case. This is a Union Jack and it was flown in Burma for the last time in 1948 when the Communist Party took over there. This is all part of Ring of Fire, an exhibit running here at the Nanaimo Museum until November the 15th, which is a very significant date, not because of this exhibit, that too, but because of municipal elections here in our province. In anticipation of the elections, we are bringing you personality profiles, if you will, on each of the municipalities that our viewers, you, live in. Here now is Annette Lucas in Nanaimo. The Nanaimo Chamber of Commerce is hosting an All Candidates Forum on November the 4th at the Vancouver Island Conference Centre that will start at 5 o'clock. Admission is free and there's a bit of a different format. It is called Speed Networking. You'll have an opportunity to interact with all of the candidates for council. That will be followed by an opportunity to chat with candidates for the RDN, Regional District of Nanaimo, and that will be followed by a mayoral forum with questions and an answer period. You can get more details in the Nanaimo Chamber bc.ca. Also keep tuned in to Shaw TV Channel 4 as we bring you municipal profiles on Parksville and Qualicum Beach in the coming days. Our candidate platform statements will begin airing in early November. We'll be back with more from the Nanaimo Museum after a short break. Still to come today, wine consumption in Canada is on the rise, thriving locally online and using drones in medical emergencies on Salt Spring Island. Did you know that 12 out of every 100 babies born die because of infected water, that there's not enough clean water for children and families in Kagera, Tanzania? Kimonos are part of the exhibit Ring of Fire running here at the Nanaimo Museum until November the 15th. Now, I'm not clear on what kimonos have to do with World War II. Amy, how do they fit into this exhibit? Well, this exhibit is a traveling exhibit from the military museums in Calgary, and it actually has two components. One component, component is military, so it tells us about the Pacific campaign in World War II, which is a really little known campaign. And the kimonos are an art installation that goes along with it, and they were done by a person who was in an internment camp during World War II in BC, and this is his response to his experience in the internment camp. Mm -hmm. What kind of story is this one telling then as a piece of art? Well, each of the kimonos are from a different camp. And okay. you'll see when you and look at the And there was one right here in Nanaimo, wasn't there? Um, they were taken out of Nanaimo and temporarily in Hastings, which you can see in one of the kimonos here. So where we know of the, the place where the PNE is. Yes. Uh, that was a temporary location where people were held until they were shipped into places that were more in the interior. Right. So like you can see on this one, it says Slocan. Right. So you'll recognize some of these names as interior cities in, or towns, in British yeah. Columbia. Wow, rare photographs I would imagine. You're not going to see images like this in too many places. Now this one over here looks very different than the others. What's the story behind this one? Let's go up closer to it. What's the story behind this one? Shirt of the rising sun, so red and full on my back, a moving target. What's the story behind that kimono? Well, the big round uh, red circle on it is a symbol that was on the back of all internees clothing and it literally is a target. So whether you are in a Japanese internment camp or in an Italian internment camp in Canada in World War II, that's mm -hmm. what would be on the back of your clothing, which is a pretty stark reminder of um, that you're not there of your own free will and mm -hmm. don't have any freedom. Wow, incredible to think that this was real life for so many people. 
um, not that long ago, really, when you think about it. Now this one, very close to home, Hastings Park. Tell me about the story with this one. So this one's a little bit um, even closer to home again because people, the idea of internment camps was to remove people who were of Japanese descent, even if they were Canadians, remove them from the West Coast. The idea was that they might be able to um, communicate with enemy spies. So they were getting them off the coast and to do that they were corralling them at Hastings Park. So people from Nanaimo who were of Japanese descent, of which there were many, were over in Hastings Park waiting to see where they would go next to be interned. Mm, unknown. Wow. We're going to come back and we're going to talk about a very, very strong Nanaimo connection to the Pacific Campaign of World War II. But first, wine consumption in Canada is growing faster than spirits and beer, and a lot of that has to do with the quality of the wine being produced right here in British Columbia. Here's Dunya Tozzi with Go Higher. You're watching Go Island on Shaw TV Channel 4. We're here at the Nanaimo Museum exploring Ring of Fire, an exhibit that looks at Canadians in the Pacific in World War II. And it's hard to imagine that people here at that time felt very vulnerable being on the coast. And there's lots of history associated with this area and the internment camps. And we're going to look at some more of that later on this edition of Go. In the meantime, Nanaimo is very fortunate to have an abundant supply of farmers markets and all the goods and foods and things that you can get at those markets. But what happens when you're off season? Where can small producers of food and goods and services sell their wares locally. Here's Jocelyn Matwee with more. As promised, a very strong Nanaimo connection to the Pacific campaign of World War II. What is this story telling? Well, this is a story of George McCabe and he's a local veteran of the Pacific Campaign in World War II. And whenever we have a traveling exhibit, we like to have a local focus just to help the community connect and bring out some of the stories of locals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And one of the interesting things about George, I think, is that not only was he a veteran of the war, he was up in Alaska um, in the Aleutian Islands, um, but he also has an interesting story after the war when he came to live in Nanaimo. Mm -hmm. And many people knew George as the chef at the Malaspina Hotel and at the Grotto restaurant, which was just off Stewart Avenue for years. Right, I think I managed to make it there once when I first <laughs> moved to Nanaimo before it shut down. Yeah, pretty interesting stories. And you can see from the photos, like there's the, he was part of the team that baked the world's biggest birthday cake, which was in 1958 in honor of BC's centennial. And it weighed 10,000 pounds. And the princess came to cut the, a piece off of the cake. Like it was a very big deal locally. So he was connected with some interesting Nanaimo stories separate from his experiences in uh, the Aleutian campaign. Excellent. How, how do you as a museum balance the traveling exhibits with, with locally curated ones? We try and do uh, about half. So we'll do, um, next year we'll have two that we do in-house and two that we bring in from other museums or that we have connections with lo uh, other collectors that have really great artifacts that we can bring in and incorporate into an exhibit. But about 50-50. Usually our exhibits are about three months. Uh, long okay. in this feature exhibit space so it gives us lots of chances to mix things up and excellent so fun I always come in people say that I have a very interesting and fun job and I do but I think you might have it talked <laughs> all these things you get to research and learn about and and put the local touch on thank you very much we're going to uh, fly over the waters now perhaps by drone we're gonna drop in on Paul Bilestein as he explores the ways in which defibrillators are being transported to the scenes where first aid is necessary Technology used for good. You gotta like that. That brings us to the end of this edition of Go Island. The museum is opening their doors to this exhibit on November the 11th, admission by donation. This will take place after the ceremonies that will take place at the Cenotaph here in downtown Nanaimo on Remembrance Day. And you can come here between 11.30 and 1.30 to check out Ring of Fire entry by donation at the Nanaimo Museum.
on Remembrance Day. Thanks for watching this edition of Go. We'll see you next time. Lakeside Dental Clinic Go Island is brought to you by Lakeside Dental Clinic, a division of the Vancouver Island Implant Center, delivering dental services, including dental implants and sedation dentistry, all under one roof. Clothing supplied by Catwalk Fashions, Kate's hair and aesthetics provided by Maffeo Salon.